Okay, in this video, we're gonna take a image of a Chicago bungalow and bring that into Revit. And we're gonna use this for the purpose of creating a room schedule to calculate square footage in our project. So I'm gonna open up an architectural template here in Revit. And I've gone to Google and looked up Chicago bungalow uh, floor plans. And since we're bringing in a floor plan image, I'm in the floor plan in our project browser level one. I'm going up to the insert tab and I'm bringing in an image. So I'm gonna click on image and I have this saved as a JPEG. PNG works just fine. You can also do PDF. I have it named Chicago bungalow floor plan and I'm saying open. I'm gonna place that into my project. Then I have to do a quick scale. So I'm going to take a look at what I currently have. So I'm just gonna use a model line here to do that. And what Rev is reading out is about 46 feet from wall to wall where it should be 24. So if I take out my calculator, I can divide by what I want over what I have to get the proper scale. So I'm gonna do 24 divided by 46 and I get 0.5217. So I'm gonna take my image, I'm gonna click on that with the left click. I'm gonna go up to the scale tool up in the top above the modify panel. I'm gonna say a numerical scale of point five two one seven and say enter and then i have to click on my screen a base point for that image to scale and now i have that moved and it's going to be roughly the size i need this to be we can double check that once again uh, we can just click on model line real quick as one way to check that and i can see that i'm at about 24 feet so we're really close to what we want to be now in here, I'm just gonna trace over these walls. So for the sake of this, I'm gonna do it pretty quick. We're just gonna make these unconnected at 20 feet and I'm gonna choose finish face exterior. And I'm gonna go and just create the perimeter of this building, so the wall envelope. So I'm just going around and clicking uh, generally where I want this to be. Um, this isn't typically how I go and draw floor plans, but I thought this might be a good way for some people to get exposed as to maybe a way to brainstorm and then modify some existing plans that are out there so that way they don't have to reinvent the entire wheel. Um, this is a great set of plans for a narrow lot, once again, 24 feet wide. I'm going to go and trim out these interior walls and I can change their thicknesses later. Um, once again, for the sake of this, this video, we're gonna go pretty quick here and not really worry about our walls. If I wanna nudge a wall over, I can select it and then zoom in and use the arrow keys. The further I am zoomed in, the uh, more accurate I will be. If I wanna change this wall type up, for example, I can just change it with the type selector. And once again, I can nudge that wall with the arrow keys to get it in position. I'm not gonna worry about doors and windows right now. However, uh, all the interior walls, I will detail out real quick for the sake of this moving around here's our closet once again these walls shouldn't be eight inches thick on the inside you can adjust that later okay i have all my walls built out for the floor plan now we have to go up and create some room separation so typically a wall revit will already define as a room separator um, but if there's a lot of open concept going on like in this floor plan we can actually use the room separator tool and essentially you're drawing lines and I like to draw them from center line of a room uh, of a wall to center line of another wall to make sure I'm enclosing the space. And this acts as an invisible wall. So Revit will recognize this as kind of like the same thing as a wall separating spaces. I'm going to also box out my stairwell. So I have kind of a back, uh, back mud room here. I'm going to separate out the dining room. And I'm gonna separate out kind of like the pantry here from the stairwell as well. So I'm gonna go through and just draw these out and separate the dining room from this living space. This will help me as I compare my floor plan to my program, what I have actually uh, designed here. Uh, so that way I know if my, let's say my kitchen space is way bigger than I programmed, uh, in general, or maybe my informal dining proportionate to my formal dining is maybe a little bit off. Once again, it's a great way to compare to your program. Uh, now that I have these spaces, I have to identify them as rooms. So I'm going to then take a room command and I'm going to tag all these rooms. 
What I like to do here is right click on my floor plan and say duplicate view with detailing. That way I can create another copy just for the room schedule. So I'm going to right click and say rename and say level one room schedule. So let's get in there and rename it. Room schedule or with tags, room tags. And then actually the room schedule we make is a result of this floor plan with tags. So let's go through and tag this. So in uh, above the room area panel, room tag, I'm just going to go through clockwise and tag all of these rooms. You can override them if you mess up. And Revit's thinking. Okay, I've gone through and I've tagged all of these rooms. You might find that with the scale you're trying to show this drawing, maybe the, the text might come up kind of small. The, the closet, we can even tag itself if we would like. You can escape. Now that we have these tags, if the labels seem extra big, all you have to do is change your scale. So let's say uh, we're going to show this residential floor plan at a quarter inch scale, which is pretty typical. Uh, you'll see the actual tag labels become smaller. These tag labels will print out the same size no matter what scale your project's at. So if you're at a really small scale, these tags are going to seem obnoxiously big. You can also go in and edit the tag itself, but we can show that in another video. So going through now that we have this tagged, in the tag itself, you can be showing area. So if we click on the actual tag, um, you can change how it's reading out with edit type. You can say show area and check that off and say apply and OK. And now we have square footages next to each of these rooms. We can also read out our square footages on a table, which we call a schedule. So I can right click on schedule and say new schedule quantities. And we can go down to where it says rooms. So I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling all the way down to rooms. Click on rooms and we're going to say OK. And then we want for sure the area. So we're going to send that over to our scheduled fields. Um, this is all. OK, and to get this to populate right, the settings are as follows. So I have my name and area in the room schedule under filter. I have none. Sorting and grouping, I have sort by none right now. Uh, however, I could sort that by you know uh, the name of the room if we want to go alphabetical. And then I have grand totals checked and itemize every instance checked. Formatting for name, uh, I have that as the heading. I could also just call this rooms if I want to call it rooms and then have these labeled. And then for area, I have uh, calculate totals on. For appearance, I left that by default, and same thing with embedded schedule by default, and I said OK. So now on a sheet, what we could do is bring in our room tags and our schedules and quantities. So if we go to right click, new sheet, and let's just say we'll just use this default one for right now for the video, um, we can go and drag in our level one tags. So we can bring that in. Um, I would want to crop that view a little bit, so let's actually go through and in and let's crop this, show our crop box, bring that in nice and tight to our drawing. Eventually once I fill out the rest of this floor plan, I'll end up hiding this image because we're just using that for some inspiration right now, um, not necessarily claiming it as our design. And then I'm going to go to my sheet, we'll drag in our level one tags place that on the view, and we'll put our schedule right next to it for easy reference. So here's our schedule, room schedule, drag that in, and drop that right next to our, our floor plan. That means then I can save some room by not showing the square footage on these tags. So if I double click in, I can click on the room itself. I can say edit type. Let's not show the area on the tag and say OK. So now I just have my rooms for reference, and then we would have that populate over here on the schedule. If we rename these, so let's just call this like family room. It should populate right here. So in our schedule, it updated automatically. And I can right click deactivate view. So I'm back in paper space. And now I can see that I've updated my room name and I have the square footage in the room schedule. And then I can just see that this is family. If I don't want the number of room on here either, because it's not populating in my schedule right now, I can click on that, edit type. 
and we can just uncheck room number and say apply and OK. And then now our labels become even smaller, which will fit our rooms even better, a little bit less distracting. And we still have all the square footage for reference. Right click, deactivate view. All right. If you like that video, don't forget to put a thumbs up, save and subscribe and more videos to come fairly soon.